What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2021 Kia Sorento. Huge thanks to Kia for providing me here with the all new Sorento to review for you guys today. So about the brand new Sorento, well, it is a very striking looking thing. So this one is an X-Line trim. So there's the X-Line, which is the top trim on an SX Prestige. So lots of different names, but this is the top trim. Um, Kia also provided me with a regular SX Prestige uh, with front wheel drive to kind of compare the look of, you know, the X-Line here, which is a little bit more rugged. The X-Line also has a one inch higher suspension. So it's a little bit more ground clearance here. There's also a uh, more advanced roof rack than what you get on other Sorrentos and also the all-wheel drive also has a snow mode which is a lot more advanced and uh, you know a little bit of a better handler whenever you're talking about you know rugged terrain and things like that so but yeah as far as the looks go one other thing is this Aruba green color which is exclusive to the X-Line and I love this color. I mean, as some of you may know, I have an affinity for dark green vehicles, but uh, this just looks really good with the dark accents you have. But let's just start up front here. I mean, man, does Kia know how to make some good looking vehicles. Every single thing they've made in the past several years has been just striking, and this is no different. I mean, look at those piercing headlights right up front there with the nice LED DRLs. Those headlights, by the way, are standard LEDs across the board now on the Sorento, although these upgraded ones are on these higher trims here. But uh, look, so, so good. I also love the three-dimensional effect of that grill. I mean, such deep grooves in that uh, tiger nose grill that they call it up front there. Really sharp. Uh, I love this. It's not quite as striking as the K5, but it's close. And I think it just looks gorgeous up front there. Very rugged too with the unique front, front bumper here on the X-Line version. Coming down to the sides, you have these 20 inch wheels, which are the largest ever offered on a Sorento, and they look really good too, you know, paired up with this dark green paint with these, you know, smoky blacked out kind of wheels. They look really good, but they have more of a grayish look to them. They're not just straight black, uh, but uh, really cool looking wheels. And you also have a nice little X line badge here on the fender, which is great. Also, some of the trim is blacked out, like the side mirrors and uh, the side trim, all that kind of stuff is gloss black and looks really nice. I also really like the little C pillar treatment you have there, where it kind of just swoops up and just a nice little stylistic element to uh, give a little more visual appeal to the sides of the new Sorento. And then going out to the back here, it is also very cool looking. I really love those taillights. They kind of remind me a little bit of Mustang taillights, although instead of three, you have two of them. But I think they're very attractive and also unique in their design as well. They're not, you know, copying anything else. They're definitely uh, just good looking taillights. I also just like the Sorento badging spelled out on the back there and uh, a little bit of a more rugged looking hatch and whatnot. So yeah, just from every single angle i think they knocked it out of the park with this sorrento styling it's really really impressive and it's also a little bit longer as far as the wheelbase goes the actual vehicle itself isn't really any longer but it is a tiny bit wider but the wheelbase is 1.4 inches longer and so that'll help give you some extra third row leg room here in the sorrento and to help just with passenger space in general um, but yeah as far as the outside here goes uh, i think that it is a 10 out of 10 as far as the styling for the sorrento all right, so let's start up and go for a drive. The Sorento here has the new Kia key, which is a really cool key. It has uh, just a logo there on the front, remote start, and then on the sides there you see all your buttons, including the lock button on the top. So it's kind of like a trigger switch or something. It's very cool. Nothing on the back there, but uh, I really like this key. I think it's pretty awesome and not too big either and uh, pretty high quality feeling, nice weight to it. But anyway, it's keyless access, keyless entry, and push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the end to start button. And it starts right up. And if you're curious to hear about the interior in the all-new Sorento here, my wife and I actually just did a full in-depth interior review, which I'll link above. You can go watch that if you want to hear all our thoughts on this new Sorento interior. Overall, especially here in this X-Line trim, the top of the line, you know, prestige trims here, it's really impressive looking and you can get this open pour wood. And uh, we go into a lot of the details of the different trims you can get since we actually had two interiors to compare and everything. So definitely go watch that video. I'll link it above. And uh, yeah, check out all the thoughts on this interior because overall, it's very impressive. All right, so setting off here in the 2021 Kia Sorento. So the first thing you'll notice, um, I guess the first thing you'll notice is the visibility here in the Sorento, which is very good. You're sitting up nice and high, and then the X lines here, one inch higher than even the regular new Sorentos. Um, and so you have an excellent view forward though. I mean, nice large windshield. I like that the A pillar is like really thin. You have a nice window here right by your side mirror, which is off on the door. Good view out of the sides here, and even the view out of the back is pretty good, even with that third row up with those headrests up and everything. It still isn't too bad of a view, and you also have 
now the 360 cameras here uh, on these higher trims and so that allows you to be able to see and everything around you a bird's eye 360 view and certainly helps a lot in parking spots tight areas things like that and uh, so very easy to drive in that regard it really doesn't feel too big either it definitely feels smaller than a telluride obviously because it is um, but you know it doesn't feel much larger than the average you know mid-size or even compact suvs um, the other thing though that i noticed right off the bat and you might notice it as well if you're not used to dual clutches is this runs an eight speed dual clutch transmission here in the turbo versions of the sorento so if you go for the lx and the s trims those are the only ones that get the nationally aspirated uh, two and a half liter four cylinder that does use a normal eight speed automatic which is a little bit smoother i'm assuming than this dual clutch because this dual clutch um Whenever you're inching up, you can still feel a catch point and it's not totally seamless. It's not one of these smoothest dual clutches out there. There are some other companies that really make it so you can hardly even tell that it's a dual clutch. This is a little bit more noticeable, but it makes a very sporty uh, transmission experience though. And so uh, even whenever you're in comfort mode though, it does smooth it over. It doesn't you know, act like it's too sporty or anything. But you might just notice starting off from a stop and stuff that it might be a little bit more lurchy and a little less smooth than a normal a torque converter automatic is going to be. So yeah, that's one other thing I notice. Otherwise though, it's really quiet and refined in here. Very smooth ride, even on these uh, 20 inch wheels, which are the largest wheels. If you go for the lower trims of the Sorento, you'll get smaller wheels and that'll probably help the ride even more. But I've had no complaints. I haven't driven these vehicles a whole lot. I've only had them for a couple of days. Um, so not as long as a normal press vehicle loan. But um, in my driving, uh, you know, it's been totally comfortable, very luxurious feeling, honestly, especially with this luxurious interior you have. But nice and quiet and since this engine is so strong it's very understressed and so it you know just accelerates with ease it never has to work too hard and just feels really really strong I love this engine but uh, while we're talking about the engine here I'm gonna put up into the sport mode which changes the gauge cluster gives it a very cool look the roads are still a little bit damp but we're gonna try uh, an acceleration here and see how it does and here we go all right <laughs> yeah this thing gets up and moves very very nicely and i've noticed it has more power in the lower rpms than it does in the higher rpms though so as you get up to the higher rpms it does feel like it runs out of steam a little bit but uh i mean it's very punchy in the low uh part of the rpm band there but it feels so ready to go and since you have that ace speed dual clutch it really snaps off those shifts quickly and you have lots of gears to pick from so it's always feeling like it's very eager but anyway so the uh, turbo versions of sorento here run a two and a half liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine it does 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque in this application and zero to 60 uh, kia claims is only 7.6 seconds but don't let that discourage you too much because it feels quicker than that for sure um i would say it feels like it's in the sixes uh, pretty easily I would say um, and strangely they also quote that as 7.6 for the all-wheel drive version front-wheel drive versions will supposedly do it in 7.4 now they are you know 150 pounds or so lighter than the all-wheel drive versions but kind of surprising to me usually all-wheel drive puts down power better especially an engine that's as torquey as this I would assume that the all-wheel drive would help instead of hurt that 0 60 time but anyway those are Kia's official claims but um yeah so it does a pretty good job though but we'll go ahead and put it over into the manual mode and see how it does for the manual shifts here. Okay, so now it's a... Uh, okay, downshifts are super quick. Upshifts, though, they're not as quick as you would think for a dual clutch. You know, you'd think it's supposed to be sportier and stuff. And maybe this dual clutch isn't tuned to be as aggressive as the setup that you get in the same dual clutch in the N-Line versions of the Sonata and the Kia K5 GT, uh, the Veloster N. Those all, you know, use this same dual clutch. But I guess in those, they just maybe tune it up a little bit. I haven't driven any of those yet to compare. But um, yeah, wish the manual shifting was a little quicker. But one thing I do love is that the manual shifts, whenever I just pulled a paddle a couple of days ago, it immediately downshifted shifted for me it was great anyway we're coming up some corners here let's see how the Sorento handles here I'm not gonna push it too much because again we do have some slightly wet and uh, you know freezing temperatures here on these roads so I don't want to push it a whole lot but um, I, it's very very impressive um, you know even just from the little bit that I can tell on this back road here without pushing it too hard you have very good body control 
and that all-wheel drive system feels like it almost has like a torque vectoring sensation in the way that it kind of pulls you through the corner and I can really feel that all-wheel drive system working well here in the X-Line. Now Kia did uh, bring me a front-wheel drive SX Prestige as well to test out and I did drive that one around for a few dozen miles as well. Now, that one liked to spin the wheels a little bit more. Uh, part of that might have been because it was a little bit cold as well but that also you know drove very nice just like this you know just one inch less ground clearance and stuff but you know drove very well and was very sporty with its handling too but even with this X-Line version even though it's one inch higher it doesn't really seem to hurt the handling much you know in my limited experience here just a couple of days it still just has very confident handling I really love that everything feels so eager you have nicely weighted steering um, that feels you know fairly quick and uh, very direct and precise throttle response especially here in sport mode is like immediate like it is there like I mean you just do a tiny dip into the throttle and it's like all right let's take off it's very eager and exciting um, brakes also very nice and responsive as soon as you start uh, dipping into them very natural and predictable feeling brakes now for this x-line all-wheel drive version they kind of max out around 4100 pounds for their curb weight depending on options and stuff they can be closer to 4000 um, and then if you were to go for like a front wheel drive uh, sx prestige you know those are going to be about 100 pounds or so lighter so maybe about 39 to 4000 pounds you know they're all you know in the same you know, kind of range you would expect for a mid-size suv nothing too crazy there but not overly heavy either honestly even for those all-wheel drive versions and so I think that certainly helps as well to make this feel a little bit more lively with its handling but overall yeah it feels really good so this new gen platform for the Sorento they say is lighter and stronger and so that par probably is part of what helps with the uh, handling as well because I think they said they dropped like 119 pounds over the old Sorento as far as uh, you know the curb weight of the vehicle goes so you're gonna have a more dynamic vehicle just for that reason alone losing weight always helps with the handling and so that's just another really great improvement here to the Sorento yeah, this thing is like a rocket though. Like if you would have told me that this is a GT or a GT line version of a Kia Sorento, I would 100% believe you um, because it really feels so sporty. And uh, so that could either be a blessing or a curse depending on your preferences. Now, I'm assuming a lot of the people that watch this channel are on the enthusiastic side. So for you guys, this will probably be right up your alley um, and be something you'll really enjoy. That actually, this feels much sportier than most other midsize SUVs. I actually, I'd say, probably all of them um, that I've tested at least. It is very lively feeling. Now, if you're just the average Joe that just wants a drama-free, comfortable commute, it can do that as well. You can go ahead and, you know, pop it back into the comfort mode and just kind of chill out. And then aside from the dual clutch, you know, giving you a little bit of harshness every once in a while, otherwise, you know, it's going to still feel very comfortable. Um, you know, we don't have any kind of advanced suspension set up in here, so there isn't any adaptive dampers or anything like that. So it's just McPherson struts, uh, multi-link rear, and that's it. You know, nothing uh, too fancy as far as the suspension goes but still is a very comfortable and relaxed ride and like I said you can go down and wheel size if you want to you know a less luxurious Sorento and have probably an even smoother ride there but um but yeah so it's just you know in comfort mode the, the throttle is nicely dulled and everything you know feels a little bit more sedate and a little less uh, razor edge you know but um it still just drives very nicely, even if you're just driving in a relaxed manner. And another thing I have to compliment the Sorento for as far as its uh, driving is its snow driving. So uh, this uh, little 48 hour loan that I had here in the Sorento just happened to fall uh, while we've had all this snow. We've gotten almost a foot of snow here in Pittsburgh in the past day. And so I had to go out uh, to pick up some uh, food last night. And I mean, there was tons of snow on the roads and I took this, even though it just has all season tires, but I put into that snow mode and this thing really handled itself very very well um, you know obviously uh, I tried to take it easy and you know, I wasn't pushing it a whole lot but you know taking it going slow and everything it was great you know and there were a few hills I had to climb um, that were completely snow covered and it you know figured it out it wasn't getting too you know, squirrely on me or anything it was able to you know keep it going in a straight line and you know make it up the hill and it does a very good job I mean you can feel the ABS working and stuff um, whenever it really starts to lose grip and everything but it did a very good job with the vehicle dynamic system of keeping everything in check, keeping it predictable and safe. But it did also allow you to play a little bit. And there was a couple of corners where I kind of just gave it a little bit of gas and kicked that back end out and it would drift on me in snow mode if I provoked it. And it would hold a real nice drift. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to do that as well. But um, so yeah, 
very good in the snow as well and especially with this snow mode here you have this all-wheel drive system which also doesn't have a center locking diff which is nice to have that um, and that snow mode is something you only get in the x-line version though unfortunately so if you have another all-wheel drive Sorento you're just going to have the other normal drive modes there um, but uh, yeah it's it does a very good job I've been very impressed you know like I said my past couple of days of driving the Sorento here in every area it just impresses pretty well another new thing here with the Sorento for 2021 is that there is no V6 option so you know I've been talking about the four cylinder you get in the base models the naturally aspirated one and then this turbo four cylinder but there is no more V6 in the Sorento um, but I really don't think you're down at all I mean I think you have almost like 50 more pound feet of torque here in this turbo four than you had in that V6 and um, I reviewed the old Sorento V6 and I mean it was a strong feeling you know V6 but I mean this feels much quicker off the line with this turbo you know you don't really have any compromises the only downside to losing the V6 is towing capacity I believe you can do like 5,000 pounds of towing with the old V6 Sorento these new turbo 4 versions you're only gonna be able to do 3,500 pounds for towing so that's the only downside there but if you're gonna tow I would just recommend going up to the Telluride anyway get the V6 in that uh, have a little bit of a larger uh, vehicle and stuff and that should probably help out with towing a little bit better anyway but uh, just that's really the only downside of this engine otherwise I mean it's <laughs> it's ready to spring into action at a moment's notice and just feels so good every time you get on that boost merging onto a highway here <laughs> oh there's even a little like burp from the exhaust out of the back there this engine you can tell this engine was set up originally for the enthusiast models and then they just happen to use it for the normal stuff as well but Man, this thing is strong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that seven and a half seconds zero to 60. There is no way. Uh, but anyway, so now we're out on the highway here. Kind of get a feel for what the highway road noise is like. Um, I'll slow it down here a little bit to a little bit more of an average non-merging speed. Um, so another thing that's really great about the Sorento is that it has really good uh, safety technology as standard. There's standard uh, automatic uh, collision assist. Um, so, you know, as far as collision avoidance assist, I should call it. So that doesn't actually apply the brakes, but it will give you alerts and stuff and help with your braking and amplify that if it thinks that it's going, if there's a, tr you know, a crash that's imminent. There's also standard blind spot monitoring, which is really great. And you can also get the available uh, blind view monitor monitor which is this little camera you have the little display in the uh, digital gauge cluster here which will turn on whenever you put on your turn signal and you know give you a better view of your blind spot there which is a really cool feature and I also popped on the highway drive assist which is the combination of the adaptive cruise control system and the lane keeping assist system and so it combines those two here to you know try and help uh, give you the best uh, easy driving experience possible on the highway and so this highway driving assist system um, I have mixed reviews with. I've already used this system extensively. I tested it out in uh, some Kia products, some Hyundai products. They use the same thing since they're owned by the same parent company. And um, this system, whenever I last used it in the Genesis G90, it was not great at keeping track of the road lines or even doing the steering and stuff. Now I'm going around corners now and I'm just letting my hands hover and I'm letting it do the steering here and it is holding the lanes better. So it's really bizarre how uh, you know Kias and Hyundais are really hit or miss with the highway drive assist feature. Sometimes they work pretty well and then there are other times where it's kind of a little glitchy and uh, doesn't give you a lot of confidence. But this so far has been doing a pretty good job with those first couple of corners because there are some other highway drive assist vehicles that would struggle with that in the past. So maybe they're continuing to make little updates to this system but it is really nice. I mean the fundamentals are that um, you know it will kind of take care of most of the steering for you. You still have to have your hands on the wheel and be paying attention of course. It is not driving itself but uh, you know it's doing the adaptive cruise and the uh, steering here but it is handling these corners just fine and here in western Pennsylvania where I live there's a lot of windy highways. I know that a lot of the other parts of the country you know your highways are straight as an arrow and in that case this is going to work really really well. It does a good job of keeping you nice and centered in your lane and uh, you know, it was going to work really well, especially for people that don't live in areas with windy highways. But yeah, every time that I use this Turbo 4 from a stop or whatever, um, it just, I love how sporty this feels. And uh, if you appreciate sportiness in your crossover, then I think you're really going to like the way this drives and the way the power delivery is here in this. Because honestly, I don't really mind the dual clutch personally, because it's smooth enough, um, you know, that I personally don't have an issue with it because of the, you know, sportier nature of the dual clutch. I think it's, it's really great. Um, um, 
But yes, the last two things I mentioned here are the fuel economy and the pricing here in the new Sorento. So first off, fuel economy. Now for this all-wheel drive uh, you know, version with a turbo motor, it is rated at 21 in the city, 28 on the highway, and 24 combined. Now, my driving has not been very representative of a normal drive because I've been doing lots and lots of idling with uh, thawing out the car with all the snow and sitting in slow traffic and you know all that kind of stuff so um, I've been driving almost 50 miles here and this I also put another 30 or so miles on the front-wheel drive version and uh, my stuff has been uh, you know like right now I'm getting 15.8 mpg but I was getting close to the 18 mark here before I started doing a lot of idling in this vehicle and in the front-wheel drive version I was seeing 19 but again that was you know, in 20, 30 miles of driving. So I'd have to, you know, have more time with these vehicles, drive them more to really get a good feel for how that fuel economy actually performs in the real world. But I will say that it's still pretty competitive with, you know, most of the other stuff out there getting, you know, mid twenties, uh, that's pretty par for the course. Um, and if you are concerned about fuel economy here, one cool thing is if you're okay with front wheel drive, there's gonna be a Sorento hybrid um, that's gonna be coming here very soon um, and should be, you know, just maybe a month or two after the launch of this. And that they're claiming you'll get 37 miles per gallon on the highway, which actually is best in class fuel economy and, and is actually a few MPG above the Toyota Highlander hybrid, which is really the only other three row hybrid uh, you know, thing in the non-luxury segment. And so if uh, you know you do worry about fuel economy, that's something that you're interested in, uh, that's great as long as you're okay with front wheel drive. Now, coming for the 2022 model year, Kia has already announced that, which is going to be, you know, middle of 2021 calendar year, they're going to have a plug-in hybrid version of the Sorento. Now, that is going to have um, about 261 horsepower. It's going to use a uh, smaller 1.6 liter turbo four combined with a six-speed normal automatic transmission, which is unusual for hybrids and stuff. Usually, they're CVTs and all that, but that's a real normal automatic, so you don't have any of the, you know, unsmoothness of this, and that also is all-wheel drive, and since it's a plug-in hybrid, it actually is going to have 30 miles of all electric range before it even needs to kick on the gas engine. So um, that one is probably going to be the way to go if you want the absolute best fuel economy. And that could potentially actually be the best experience. Now I'd have to wait to actually drive one to say that definitively. Um, but if you have you know, the smoothness of an electric powertrain that's quiet with a normal automatic that doesn't have any dual clutch unsmoothness, and you have that 30 miles of electric range, and you're only down you know, about 20 horsepower over this, and you have immediate power with the electric motors and that, I'm very excited for that plug-in hybrid one in 2021. And um, you know, all things considered, as long as you're not worried about the higher pricing of that one that's most likely going to have, um, you know, that's probably going to be, I think, the best pick and the ultimate one in my opinion. Uh, but again, I'll have to wait to actually drive it before I know for sure. But um, in the meantime, you know, just as far as fuel economy goes, this is gonna be pretty average, but this is actually an improvement of several MPG over the old Sorento. And so even with the extra power, all the extra torque of this engine, you still actually gain some miles per gallon over that V6. And so and they, it's very impressive. You know, they make these things faster and yet they burn less gas than before. And engineers are geniuses. They can you know, continue to do this in every new generation of these vehicles. And um, so that's a very nice improvement here in the Sorento as well. But the last thing to mention here about the Sorento is its pricing. So uh, Sorento is here for the new 2021 version. They are a little bit more expensive because they got rid of the L trim. So the LX trim is now the new base trim. And so they started just over $30,000. It's like $30,560. Now this X-Line, fully loaded, it's an SX Prestige X-Line is what they call this trim exactly. This one is $43,760. And so I still think that's fairly reasonable and it's really hard to compare the Sorento with anything else, honestly, because it kind of bridges multiple segments because it's got the third row, but it's not the big three row crossover, that's the Telluride, and that competes with all the other normal three row crossovers. And then midsize SUVs, none of the, none of the other midsize SUVs have a third row and so this is kind of in a class of its own in a way it's like mid-size plus or something uh, instead of a full-size you know SUV here so um, it's very interesting you know the way they position this it's a very unique niche and you can get again go watch the interior review if you want to hear how that third row is but you know it's not going to be as good as the Telluride of course it's smaller than a Telluride and so it really just comes down to I guess what you're going for with the Sorento if you need a third row every once in a while but it's not something 
using use on a regular basis. You know, this could be a nice little savings because this is about a couple thousand dollars cheaper than a Telluride, but it's not a huge difference. Again, we're talking about two, three thousand um, dollars base price versus base price, um, and I think a fully loaded uh, Telluride will get up to maybe like forty-seven thousand or so. So again, we're at forty, almost forty-four thousand in this. Again, you know, you're only looking like twenty-three hundred dollars difference or something. So it's not a huge difference, and so you know that's really the only tricky thing about this vehicle. I think a lot of people will prefer the V6. They'll prefer the bigger size of the Telluride because if you do use the third row in this, I mean, you're not going to have much trunk space. And the Telluride can actually still retain a decent amount of trunk space even with the third row up. And so that is really the only thing about this is that it, you're so close to Telluride pricing that, you know, it's going to kind of be a toss up. And I mean, they've radically different styling and stuff. So it's going to come down to that a little bit as far as your subjective taste. But aside from that, I think honestly the Telluride is the biggest competitor to the new Sorento here, which is kind of funny, but that's, because even like a Hyundai Santa Fe, uh, you know, only two rows, all that kind of stuff is only two rows. And so having the third row here, I think really, you know, sets this apart. And uh, so that's why it's really hard for me to really cross shop this with anything else. I can't really do it. But uh, like I said, I think Telluride, you know, if you're not penny pinching every single dollar, you know, if it were my money, even though this is a little bit more enthusiastic, you know, it depends on why you're buying a three-row crossover. But if you're buying it to be a sporty vehicle uh, and you want something that's going to be a little bit more dynamic, this is definitely more dynamic than a Telluride. It's more exciting to drive than a Telluride. It's, uh, you know, a lot more fun with the handling and stuff. But who buys a three-row crossover for that? Maybe a few people do, but I think most people are going to be buying a three-row crossover for the space, for the size, um, you know, for the practicality. And I think in that case, you know, you might be better off just spending a couple grand more for the Telluride. But whether you go Telluride or Sportage, you can't go wrong with either pick. They're both really great SUVs. It just really comes down to how much space you need. Like I said, I just love the looks. I love the interior. I love the way it drives. I love everything about the uh, uh, the Sorento here. And then on top of that, the last little thing to add is that you have a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty as the cherry on top. So if you are someone who buys a car and keeps it for a long while, you're gonna have longer warranty coverage on the powertrain than, you know, basically all the other competitors. So um, that's another very nice thing here about the Kia. But yeah, overall, I just really like it a lot. And uh, I definitely recommend checking one out if you're interested in it at all. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on the uh, Sorento here in the comments below. Huge thanks to Kia for providing me here with the Sorentos to review for you guys today. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.